Hey, what's up you guys? It's me, Comic Corp, back here with another video again, and this is going to be my review of Spider-Man Homecoming. So if you have not seen Spider-Man Homecoming, go watch it now. Go to the theaters. Don't watch it on bootleg. This is not a movie you want to watch on bootleg. Please don't do that. Go to the theaters. See it in HD. Come back to the video and watch this review. Please, you guys. You do not want to miss out on in my opinion, is one of the best MCU movies of this year. And aside from um, Thor Ragnarok, it is one of the best movies because I have not seen Thor Ragnarok yet. But I have hoped that Thor Ragnarok will be one of the best movies too, if not better than Spider-Man Homecoming because it is one of the best. And Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was cool, but this was by far one of my favorite movies of the year. It was charming. It was funny. It was um, dramatic at some moments. Like, the drama was really weird, was really real, and um, it was really, um, I, I was invested into the characters, like, from Peter to um, Michelle to um, Ned to um, even, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Vulture. It really did a good job of showcasing the characters. And one of the things I liked about this movie was that Peter's, um, from where we leave off at the end of the Avengers, Peter is um, still excited about being an Avenger. He still wants to do the Avengers thing. And it, it shows up in this movie because it takes both, it takes apart, it takes apart, not takes apart, but um, it, um, that emotion, that feeling of like excitement about being something more than what you are or or feeling that you can do something greater with yourself um, with the abilities that Peter has. He has the feeling of like, oh, I can do something greater than myself. I can be something greater than myself. Um, it is really great and it shows a lot of, it shows up a lot in this movie and becomes like the basis, I think, in this movie that Peter draws on. That like, he wants to be an Avenger now he wants. To, he doesn't want to um, do anything else. He just wants to do this one thing, and I feel like it kind of resonates with people who have this um, this feeling towards like a type of job you want or um, a person you want to date or something like that. It's like you want to get this now, right now, but you have to wait. And that's one of the things that I like about Peter is that even when he um, makes a mistake, out of mistake, he still wants to uh, fulfill his dream. But it's not until the last part of the movie where Tony unveils the, um, the, um, what is that? The, uh, what suit is that? Um, the Iron Spider suit, or this version, of, this movie's version of the Iron Spider suit, um, that Peter, um, decides not to go through with it, and he decides to, um, just stay at home, or just stay on the ground, stay low, not try to do more than what he can, and, uh, be a hero on his own turf. Not trying to be like the big boys, um, like Thor or um, Captain America, Hawkeye, or even um, Black Widow, the big leaguers. But, you know, just doing what he can little by little, day by day, and um, just trying to uh, not move so fast. And I really enjoyed that part of the film or that aspect of the film, of the film. And I really think it touches upon, like, yeah, like um, some, some stuff that people, like, deal with. Uh, things that they want but other than that I feel like this is one of the best Marvel movies that we have had it even has a great villain um, by, played by Michael Keaton Michael, Michael Keaton does, does a really great job of showcasing the um, emotion of a guy who just lost his job wants to, just wants to provide for his family and um, he's doing the best thing that he can or best thing that he thinks he can do to do that, and that's by selling the um, the Chidori, the Chitori, um scraps that he re-engineered with other people, and then turned into weapons. And now they're selling it on the black market on the streets. Um, and now he uh, has found a way to provide for his family, and that's all he that's, that's all he wants to do. And Peter comes in later on in the story and like, gets in his way, and um, he's he feels threatened by um, Peter's actions that. If he takes out his operation, that um, he won't be able to provide for his family, and I feel for that. That's a real human emotion. That's what I think that Marvel is missing with some of their um, villains and some of their movies is that that human um, 
multi-layered um, human emotion, human emotions, and having villains that are multi-layered rather than just two-dimensional. They're just there for the plot, and they're they're just there to um, move the hero along and to progress the hero into whatever they need to do or whatever they have to do or uh, kind of like um, push the character to do something good for himself or for other people. So I like that aspect of it. And it is really well done, really well shot. Um, the comedic points are on point. I love that. And like I said, man, the, the movie is really good. I think you, you guys should really go out there and uh, look at the movie um, and enjoy it for yourselves. This is a really good movie that Marvel is moving into. Um, as Marvel is moving into this phase, phase four, I think that's going to happen after Avengers Affinity War. So I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that too. But it is really good, and you should, you guys should go out and check it out. And um, so yeah, that's gonna be it for me, you guys. Um, yeah, that little short review. Um, go out and check out Spider-Man: Homecoming. Um, it's still in theaters, and you can check me out um, on my Instagram it's, and Tumblr at Search Hero 100. And feel free to like, subscribe, and comment on this video if you want to see more for it. Um, that really helps the channel out. So I'll see you guys real soon. And um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. And have a good day. Thanks, you guys. Bye.